Hey everyone, Jeff here. This is day, working day three of the North Wing breaking ground. And so I figured I'd do a little update for you guys. And as you can see, we started excavation. For the most part, I went pretty smooth in the beginning here. What you guys will see is we've got this nice hole down here on the ground. Um, but we did run into some ledge and anybody who's familiar with construction knows that <laughs> ledge is not always that fun. So what I decided to do in this episode is we'll show you a little process of where we're at, um, but also um, how we've been uh, dealing with the ledge and some of the modifications we made to details and whatnot to try to make this as least impactful as, as possible on the process. So first let's take a look at the ledge. This orange line is actually the foundation wall. Um, this, what you're seeing here, is after 16 hours of hoe ramming with an excavator. And you can see we're still not quite there. The, um, the dotted line is the foundation wall, and the plan is to hopefully get at least six inches of space to get a little bit of a footing in there as we're going along. And so what we're going to do now is um, hop inside and I'll show you a little bit about how we plan on making this as least impactful as possible, changing some details here and there, and then talk about some of the other things I'm doing while all of this is going on, like ordering windows and materials and so on and so forth. So without further ado, let's jump back into part 10 of the North Wing project. All right, so now I'm back here in the office. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I have my handy dandy iPad here, and um, I'm going to sort of show you this. This was the detail that um, that we had originally, um, and so if I zoom out a little bit, you can see um, there's sort of a uh, uh, overhead patio here, or a covered patio here. There's a concrete patio there, and then this is our foundation wall down here. Initially, you can see grade is kind of up at this level, and so this is sort of um, what we're dealing with. And so our rock that we found is right here. <laughs> And so what we've, it's actually, I should say, it's more like this. <laughs> and so uh, we've been chipping at this now for three days. And so we're finally at a point. So a couple things that we've done so far um, to try to mitigate the amount of time and effort that this is taking. Um, first, taking the entire footprint of the building, we're moving it six inches this way because there's just one piece of rock that is, I mean, they've been chipping at it for hours and hours and hours and it's just, it just dust, it will not break. Um, and so if we clear this, it's actually gonna give us essentially the, this footing um, will line up directly with that, with that rock face. But we also need to work with this detail here. We've basically, if we imagine here's the rock here and now we're basically pouring up against it um, like so, we're actually going to move the footing up flush with the floor. Not ideal. Um, I like the floor to sit on top and I like the, the, the footing drain to be sort of, you know, in line with the floor, but um, we're dealing with what we got now. So the footing's gonna be flush with the floor. So that saves us four inches of, 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 deep, of, of going further down, right? Because um, again, this is taking forever and ever and ever. And then the, uh, the footing drain is actually gonna have to go up here. Now I'm gonna try and play with um, the, the ability to maybe try and get this a little lower. Um, maybe there's areas we can, or maybe um, there's areas we can make the footing itself a little bit lower or something. Um, ideally, you want the footing drain to be at least even, if not below your slab. But I am also going to make sure that I take the bitchethane and, and I go up and around. Um, and this will be all covered in gravel there. Um, and then that, that sort of will, will go away. So this is all the rock here that we're digging into, and that's going to go away there. So that's kind of the solution. And so what that did is it let, let us uh, chip away a little less rock because we didn't need to, to um, we didn't need to sort of, you know, continue out to here. Um, we saved four inches of rock there, uh, of chipping there. Um, and then, you know, we're dealing with, with whatever we have here. And so uh, the footing is gonna get poured against it. All right, so last thing on the rock before I should move on to the other stuff that's been going on while we're digging um, is I just wanted to show you, um, I did a scan of the ledge when we first found it and um, in Polycam using my phone. Um, check out some links below for some videos on Polycam. And so if I click it here, um, you can kind of see where that ledge is, if I zoom into this corner here, you can kind of get a sense of it as compared to the foundation wall. So as you can see, not ideal, um, not in a great location. And so that's the rock, that's what we're dealing with. Um, 
and uh, I'll keep you updated on where that moves uh, in the next video for sure. While this has all been going on for the last you know, three to five days, uh, working days, I should say, um, there's a couple things that I've been doing ramping up to. Um, you know, heading up to this moment since you guys last saw any of these videos, um, part nine, I guess, was the last one. Things like securing financing as well as a building permit were part of the process over the last couple months while also having another baby. <laughs> but uh, I did get the permit and the and the financing. And now we're at the point where obviously we're ramping up. So I ordered windows this week. Um, there are four to six week lead time. So I wanted to make sure I ordered those. And then I also wanted to make sure that I got a lumber quote um, locked in. Um, for those not familiar with what's going on in the world, uh, things are getting more expensive. There's a lot of um, uncertainty in the market. And so um, already starting to see uh, certain building materials tick up. Um, so I wanted to make sure that the quote I received from the lumber yard was accurate and my materials were good. Um, and so I locked that in. But what I wanted to talk to a little bit for couple of minutes here is um, how I utilized Revit to um, help me with the material order. Um, as far as the lumber is concerned, as far as rough framing and things like roofing and so on and so forth. So first, what you see here on screen is an Excel sheet. Um, this is an Excel sheet that I actually used. I created based on the quote from the lumber yard. If you've never seen a lumber yard quote, uh, they look very similar to this. Uh, the difference is I extracted the information and I've organized by area. So I utilize this to, to sort of run through each area and each section and try to figure out exactly how many boards I needed. You know, it's easy to stay square foot or, or linear foot or global, but because I'm actually ordering each individual piece, I really wanted to go through the process of figuring that out. And so how did I do that? Uh, there's a couple of different ways you could do it. You could do it the way I said before, which is just doing a linear linear foot, square foot takeoff, and then using a formula to extract the in information and get pretty close, right? You don't need to be exact. You need to be within a percentage and make sure you have enough material to build the project, right? But you also don't want to buy too much material. But because I'm also going to be framing this project myself, I thought the effort of actually modeling every single piece of wood uh, would it be worth it? Um, and then also maybe can I utilize that to, to even maybe have a more efficient uh, buy of the wood, um, maybe have less cut, maybe have less waste. And so what I did uh, during this process is you guys already saw the framing, uh, the framing model. Um, and so that was already there. But what I decided to do was go through and actually model all of the studs. Um, let me zoom in here. Uh, so if I go down to the basement here, so every single stud, pretty much every single piece of wood that we're going to be installing within reason. Um, so you can see here's here's studs, um, yeah, here's the plates, here's the sill plates, all the headers. We talked about the header families in another video. And uh, as I move up through the project here, and I look in here, you can see, you know, all the studs are modeled in here, all the studs are modeled in there. And what I did is I made sure that these had very specific types. So I had a, I created a, a two by four stud field type. And so that way I was able to say this two by six is not is for studs versus headers or framing or whatever it is. And so, um, and then I also utilized parameters to make sure that um, I had an understanding of uh, what all this stuff was doing. And so if I go to uh, this guy here, um, I had a view here that was accounted for. And so as I was going through, turn off this filter, you know, everything that's purple, essentially, um, I, I was pulling off through the quote. So I went through the process of sort of going through each individual piece, um, didn't have to click each individual piece, it's in Revit, so I could look at whole sections of pieces and so on and so forth, and get a sense of what I might need. If I zoom in here, it's kind of hard to read it. But um, order info says um, two by six by 10. And then it says accounted for as a yes, no parameter. And then I have uh, ordered. And so once I order these, I'm going to click these. So I'm tracking this information. So once I put it on the list, I said accounted for. Once I ordered, I said ordered. And the way I was sort of looking at these things um, was either via schedule or via the model and looking at the cut length, um, you know, so it's four and four. And so you look at these two, this is four foot one and a half. So you have a two by 10, you, you know that you we need one two by or a 10 foot length. So let's say you have two by six by 10. And so I have this list of all of the all of the pieces. And that's kind of how I generated um, the material takeoff. I do have a schedule. Uh, you can see here, here's all the framing pieces. Here's their cut lengths. Um, and then I did have a formula in here for for board for board width um, or board length as well. So it's the nearest board length. Um, I found it a little easier to do it graphically and pull that information in there. And so then I pulled it all together in a in a schedule like you see here. And this way I was able to send that to the lumber yard and have them update the quote to something that's more accurate. And so utilizing all this information, roofs very easy. I click the roofs, square footage, figure out how many pieces of van tech you need or whatever it is, or, or zip wall and so on and so forth. So I went through the model piece by piece, probably took one or two nights maybe, um, and I created a much more accurate list. It was actually pretty close to the quote. 
uh, that the lumberyard had, but there are some discrepancies here and there. And so I, I like to be able to, to know exactly what I was ordering. And then I also had it by area. So basement, first floor, second floor, roof, whatever it was. And this way I could order in chunks if I want, if I didn't want to order the whole thing. If you guys are interested in this spreadsheet and some of this process, um, you can actually download all these sample files at the BIM After Dark community. So head on over to community.bimafterdark.com to sign up the sample file for Revit. Um, the sample file for uh, all this uh, construction management stuff is also there. The Excel files, the schedules, all that good stuff. And thanks for tuning in to part 10 of uh, the North Wing project series. Uh, I look forward to part 11, where hopefully I'll be showing you some concrete starting. And so stay tuned for that video. Subscribe to this uh, channel, please. If you want to follow along, give it a thumbs up and see you guys in the next time.